All right, guys, welcome to the shack. And tonight, I'm going to walk you through a little quick design for some name tags. Uh, this is going to be a pretty cool design because we're going to do the design from scratch, first of all. And secondly, we're going to be using a tool that you may or may not know about called variable text that exists in Lightburn. And what this does, guys, variable text enables you to take a list of as many things as you can put on a list, uh, process that through... Uh, from a spreadsheet over to a comma separated values file and then once you do that you can have Lightburn derive text directly from that sheet instead of having to sit there and change it in every single design uh, and it does so using wildcards so that's pretty cool it's really handy I'm gonna be making some name tags for my friend May May for an event she has coming up pretty soon there's like 75 of them so this is gonna be one of those situations to where I do want to use variable text and I'm gonna bring you guys along and show you how I do it so Let's drop down into the computer and get started. All right, guys, so to start with, we've got a little housekeeping we've got to do. Uh, this is a list of names that I received for the name tags. And there's a total of 76. And so what we've got to do is we've got to come up with a way of taking these names off of this list here uh, and getting those over into Lightburn without having to type all this stuff. So I'm going to go into the spreadsheet and I'm going to just copy all those names. All right. So now I'm just going to start myself a new blank spreadsheet. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to paste using Control V. I'm going to paste all those names over into the spreadsheet. Now, the problem we've got right now is some of these are one names, like first name only. Some of them are first and last. Well, Lightburn, in order to do the design the way I want it, I need these things separated. I need first name and then last name because I'm going to be assigning where I want them to go. So the way we're going to fix that is I'm going to click on this column here, the one where all the data is, and then we're going to go over to the tab up top where it says data. And we're going to be using a tool called text to columns. So we're going to click on that. And it's going to give you this, this is basically just a little wizard that's going to help you divide these words into the appropriate columns. Uh, the function that we're looking for is called delimited. So we're going to click on that, hit next. Uh, you're going to want to make sure that you have space selected. And if you'll notice down here in the little preview, when you select space, it's drawing a line at where it thinks you want things separated. It's not a bad idea to kind of peruse down through there and double check. Uh, because sometimes you have folks that have their name is like La Chance or, you know, uh, L whatever. These, these names that have two words can kind of mess you up on this. But typically speaking, uh, you know, as, as, as long as you don't have any of those two word names to deal with, this is usually pretty pain, painless. So we're going to see that it's dividing it uh, the way that we want. It's going to roll down through here, just kind of get a look at it. Looks like everything's good. Anybody who doesn't have a first na a last name listed, it's only doing the first names, doing it in the left column. That's exactly how I want it. So we're just going to go ahead and hit next and finish. So now it's divided it into two separate columns. Because I'm OCD, I'm going to go over here and I'm going to select these. I'm going to go to the home tab and I'm going to change this to like 16 font bold and then change it back just to get them <laughs> to where they're all the same uh, text and everything. I, I, I just, it's just my OCD. All right, so now that we got these things divided up, we got first name and last name when appropriate, we're good to go on that part, but we're not done yet, guys. We've got to take this and we've got to save as, and you're gonna to wanna to browse over to wherever you're saving your folders or your, your projects, uh, which in this case is gonna be all the way over into my customer, folder may may we'll go ahead and get into her folder here and i've got this one called october 2024 created and this is going to be the name tag list right here and i'm just going to hit save and we're going to overwrite it yes and we're done with that part so there's your little free excel uh conversion to csv format there's your little free class on that one uh, you may have to back up and rewind and start over a couple of times to get the hang of it but once you get it guys it's not it's, it's not that bad uh, all right so now that we're in light burn guys uh may may has requested this is the name tag that we did last uh last event that was shaped like a peach 
So we wanted about the same size because she was good with the size. So to make this Christmas ornament, we're gonna start off with a somewhat of a circle. And it's not, I know it's not a perfect circle yet, but I'm just trying to get my size right. So we're gonna set this to be 61 by 61. So that should be about the size we need it. All right, so there's my circle. And what we're wanting is something that kind of looks like a Christmas ball or Christmas decoration, but I kind of want to make my own. So that's what we're going to do. So the next part is going to be, as we all know, most of the Christmas balls, especially the glass ones, have that little neck that comes up. So that's what we're going to make next. And I'm going to take and just basically select this guy. I'm going to line it up, hold control, click on the little circle and I'm going to line them with vertical centers. All right, so now I need to add a little radius to a little, little too much radius there. Uh, let's go with five. We'll add five millimeter radius to both sides of that guy. All right, that kind of, that works. And I'm just going to duplicate that. All right, now I'm going to do two different move, maneuvers here. I'm going to click this one first, then I'm going to click one of these two. And I'm going to use the boolean to trim out from around there, which is going to leave me that little piece on that one. And now on this one, I'm going to select that guy, select this one, and I'm going to weld them two together. So now I've actually got two different pieces. Uh, that one is going to be a cut. I'm going to change it over so I can grab this other one. And this one is going to be, let's see what color I want to use. Let me use that color for a feel. And then we'll change this back to a cut. Oh, that was confusing, wasn't it, guys? My bad. All right, so got that laid out, and just so you know, there is still a cut line underneath there. So that is a very bright, loud color. Let's go with the orange. There we go. All right, so what I'm going to do on that one is I'm going to just leave this. I'm going to put this at 250. Uh, line interval, I'm going to set it at two millimeters. And what I'm trying to do is just do a real checker plate looking design there. All right. And so the top up here, we've got to have a, you know, the little place you hang your Christmas ornament with, I guess. So I'm going to put that there. And then we'll make another little hole. And I want this to actually look like a Christmas ornament. So we'll just make this three by three. And so there we are. Now let me take and get rid of this guy right here for a minute. Because now I need that and that to grow together. And there we go. And put my little checker plate back. All right, so now all I've got to have is these three guys here. I need to make sure that those are aligned. All right, I'm going to, let me see. Yeah, they should, they should fit still. I'm going to group those just to make sure they don't get messed up. And then we're going to move it over here to this one. I'm going to hold control, click that, hit the bullseye button. That's gonna center it, but as you can see, it's a little too high. So we're just gonna walk it down just a little, just to get May May inside the ornament. And we're good. All right, delete that one. I kind of want to put a little bit of checker around the bottom of the ball as well. So let me click that one. I'm gonna do an inside offset. Uh, four, let's do three, three millimeters. Okay. All right. So we're going to get rid of our orange for a second. So yeah, that works pretty good. All right. So I'm going to duplicate that guy and I'm going to click this interval circle that I just made, click the little guy. If I can get it to click. All right, and then I'm gonna trim this corner off of that. 
So I should have some overlapping lines right there, but I've got, I've got mine set up to remove overlaps. So that should fix that. Uh, take that line and this one. Duplicate those, and I'm going to use that same number five on that. So now, oh, that did something funky. <laughs> I'm going to have to change that one. Uh, let's see here. So I'm going to set the line interval on that at 0.25 and leave the other one the way I had it. So... I'm also going to need to duplicate that guy and set it to that number 5. And that's going to pop that hole in there where I need it. So let's see what that looks like. All right, I see one thing that I forgot to do is on this one, I'm going to want to crosshatch that. Uh, and if you really want to, you could set this to like a 45 degree crosshatch. And that's going to make it have a little different look. So, yeah, I think we're good. I think we're good on that one. So what we'll do is go ahead and put this over here. And before I get too far along, I'm going to hit my save as. And I'm going to go ahead and save that in the folder. That way we have our file in case something goes terribly wrong. Uh, I'm just making sure of what my cuts look like here. So, yeah, cut. Wait a minute. I see a problem with that cut. That line does not need to be a cut. That was almost a mistake. See, that's why I always go back and look. Because I wanted that line, but I didn't want it to be a cut. So <laughs> that would have that would have made for an ugly ornament. So yeah, it looks like we've got all of our artwork laid out and it's like we want it. Now let's get back to the nitty-gritty. So variable text function. So I'm gonna clear this out. Alright, we went through the trouble of setting this file up earlier. So we're gonna to go to browse, go to the events name tag list. All right, I'm gonna hit okay. It's gonna open it. So now when I hit test, it's gonna show the first name on that list. All right, you can, you can also change it. I can go to the second name on that list. So where is our list? Let's pull the list up. And that way we can look at it and I'll show you guys what I'm talking about here. And I also want to just confirm uh, that everything is the way it needs to be. So here's our list. Alice Wittry, Amber, and then Amy Bartlett. So if we hit the next button here to go to two, this should be Amy Bartlett. So we're on target. Now keep in mind, uh, in here, this zero is one. Okay, there is no there is no such thing as starting at one. You start at zero. Zero through nine is a total of ten. So just keep that in mind. So we've got that set up. We've got our material in there. We've got you know a good look at what our layout of our work area is. I'm gonna group this guy. And we're gonna go ahead and use the array tool. And I'm gonna try to fit as many as I can on here without getting too crazy uh, with them fitting. I'm going to go to right there. Uh, the reason I'm not going to go any further, you'll see, is I've got mine staggered offset. So i, I got to stay pretty close to the edge of the material. And so that looks like about what I, I'm capable of doing without any waste. Uh, that's going to give us a total of 24 of them done. So we hit OK. And go here. And if I go in and hit Test, you'll see that we've got quite a few of them done. You'll see that there's two that are not populating a last name. 
Now, I'll go ahead and give you a little fair warning. Those are going to create an error when we go to uh, send it to the laser, but that's okay. We're just going to ignore that and send it on out. So, one last look before we start, guys. Uh, I'm going to be running, uh, we'll run six. We'll run six. That's fine. This stuff can be stubborn, this material. Six millimeters on the cut, 150. This is a little too slow. We're going to do 200. And 50 on that text uh then i'm going to take this fill here we'll run that this bi-directional line with wide spacing so 250 is fine on that one because what i'm changing on these is the actual uh lines per inch so it's not going to matter on those uh, that one does need to come up to 100 percent power though and we'll be good on that let me make sure nothing weird's turned on on here yep Turn that off. Do not need constant power. Uh, now it's got me paranoid. No. Nope. All right. So another thing we need to do is we need to make sure our cuts last. So I'm going to right click right here, sort cuts last. And it's going to put them down here at the bottom. So we're good to go, guys. Uh, I'm going to bump this save button one more time right here before we send it, just in case something goes wrong. And uh, here's your preview. There's that error I was telling you was going to get which is fine, uh, just hit continue. And then here's the preview. Uh, this shows you what they are going to look like or thereabouts. So let's burn them up and see what it looks like. All right, guys, after a few minutes and a little burning and got it all done, there's the final result. It's kind of hard to see because of the poor zoom ability of this camera but it turned out nice i got the uh the little top right here is brown like i wanted it plus i got that little bit of a kind of a unique checker pattern around the outside edge and of course the names uh were pulled from the sheet and put on to the name tag so uh, i've got these off the machine wiped them down with a little alcohol and the next step is going to be to put the magnetic backs on them and we'll be good to go so i hope the video helped you out guys um uh, it's one of those tools in Lightburn that uh, is really, really handy, but nobody really talks about it a whole lot. There's a few videos out there. Uh, me personally, I went out to Lightburn's uh, actual channel for Lightburn, and that's where I kind of studied up on this uh, a couple of years ago when I first started using it. But it is very handy with stuff like this, so you don't have to type uh, text. A couple of little uh, pitfalls that I will warn you about. A lot of times, if, if you have a name that is really, really long, uh, you're going to want to use that name in your design element to try to figure out exactly where to place everything. Because if you use the shortest name in your design layout and then you put the long name in there, there's a chance that you may have uh, that design uh, element would like be on top of other things. So always take that into consideration. If you have a really, really long name, that's going to be the one that you're going to want to use for your for your designing. Uh, and then when you go in there and put the uh, wild cards in, uh, it will pull the names from the spreadsheet. So it's just a handy little tool. And like I said, if I didn't do a good enough job explaining it to you guys, feel free to go over and check out Lightburn's video uh, on their channel. I'll try to drop a link to their video as well uh, down below. But uh, for more uh, tips, tricks, and how-tos, feel free to hit the subscribe button and stop by. And until next time, be safe. And have a good day.